This is the Outlier's Edge podcast, where we champion the leaders who are shaping the next era of humanity by taking them to the edge of their comfort zone so that they can lead us to the edge of what's next. I'm your host, Niyama Ashang. Let's do this. Hello, hello there. Niyama Ashang here, founder of Outlier's Edge, where we champion the leaders who are shaping the next era of humanity. Mm, it uh, feels good to just say that. Today, we have uh, Alejandra Castillo, one of the leaders who, are, who is shaping the next era of humanity. And, I, and Alejandra, I'm, I'm, one, I'm glad that we're in conversation. It's wonderful to have you uh, here today. I'm excited to explore both the journey of like where you've been as you're leading and, more, and most importantly, like what's up ahead and how we can be like how, how you are addressing that. All right. So it's wonderful to have you here. Thanks for thanks for being here. Thanks for being in connection here. It's good. To, it's good to see you. Hello. So nice to be here. I'm really excited. We were having a few conversations before, and I was looking forward to begin this episode and try to talk a little bit more about um, what has been this. We can say this challenge of being a young woman in in this era and trying to talk about those taboo um, topics that usually there's a little, we can say, a wall to talk about it, even in the families, even at the school. So yeah, I'm really excited. Um, Alejandra Castillo, as you said, I'm the project coordinator at Period Guatemala. It's a chapter from Period Movement in the United States. We are the first chapter in Central America, and we are so happy to talk to you about some of our, um, what has been our journey, what has been some of our successes, what has been some of our challenges, and how Central America is going to begin to talk more about periods. You know, this is, Alejandro, I'm really glad that we're having this conversation in particular. You talked about like, the walls and the taboos that are there. And, and can I just invite us, both of us in this conversation to like, uh, to readily embrace and to, and to be, I know what it is, to be a model of what the world could look like if, if we weren't being restraining ourselves with the walls, if we weren't looking at the taboo things and instead we were just openly being in conversation with one another. Around it. Are you good with this conversation being a model of, like how you would love to see the world in the, in the future. Yeah, I would love to because I believe that many girls and I can be included in that group have had this time in which we are so embarrassed to talk about a menstrual blood, to talk about a past, to go ask some help maybe to our father, to our brother. And this eventually gives the, the girls this we can say like this shadow to them, how they are going to be developing, how they are going to be acting and reacting in society. So I'm I'm very glad to be part of this movement because eventually we hope that this will leave a better era in which the girls can be more developed, can be more uh, more happy, more secure, and more uh, free with their bodies and with their conversations. So yeah, I'm very happy. Oh, that's that's wonderful. And as you say this here, um, the focus needs to stay on on the girls. Uh, absolutely. And like, I don't have experience with it. And so when you talked about like the fathers and the brothers and the other people there, I'm like, OK, let me be a model for that. I might mess up. I, like I can I can I, I think I need to just put that into this space. I'm like, oh, how do we have this conversation in like in a well-intentioned, well, like moving things forward type of way, so on and so forth. Right my ask of you is like again like as we model this here it's like how like i'm going to i'm going to be in a place where i'm not going to hide anything i'm going to bring my curiosity in so many different mm -hmm. ways um but i don't want to pretend that i'm the model like like that i'm the yeah the model student in the sense of like i know exactly what's up there let's my invitation is like correct me as necessary lift things up as it needs to be, move the conversation in places that it needs to focus along the way so that like, yeah, so we can just be in it. Does that sound good to you? Yes, yes, we actually have had certain experiences 
we in period Guatemala, we give workshops to different communities, to universities, to schools, to um, girls that are around the age of menstruating for the first time. And we had these experiences in which we have um, kids like boys or, um, you know, or men. And it has been very wonderful to hear their feedback because I, I have this in mind, one a specific moment in which we end giving this workshop, it was an online workshop. And there was this comment in the private chat that said, thank you so much because now I know how I can help my sister. Now I know how she might be feeling right now. Now I know how it has been so uh, embarrassed for her to open up and talk about her period. So yeah, I believe that the first step that the men and boys need to do is begin to learn and begin to research and have this curiosity about what is menstruation, what is period, okay? Like what's this um, journey for a girl? Because I believe that in some cases, and this is a phrase that we usually use in period, that what you cannot see, usually it happens to be that it's an invisible problem, okay? We do not see menstrual blood, so we think that that is not a problem and that girls and women have already figured out how to use or how to live their menstrual life. But in many cases, they are struggling inside and maybe in some cases, it's very difficult for the girl or the women to open up because we kind of are searching for that safe place. And sometimes because men are not well informed, we kind of go straight to a closed door, you know? So yeah, I believe that that's the first place. Obviously schools, families, and those spaces have a lot of things to do. Like for example, how the school have usually these conversations, which they separate the boys and the girls in different spaces. And the girls hear one, um, we can say one workshop very different from the boys. So at the end, the boys does not have the same information that the girls receive or how the schools just talk about period as something very biological, but they do not talk about products, about certain um, diseases or a certain alteration that comes with the period. So we need to break this taboo and have these open conversations and eventually let those um, menstrual people that it is safe to talk about that and that you're not going to suffer from this um, stigma or from these, um, yeah, like bad faces that why are you talking about that? Why is that so gross? Like, it's normal, it's, it's menstrual blood. It makes me think here about like me growing up as well. And I'm, and I'm just thinking about like, oh yeah, the two different classes, like the boys were in one place, the, the girls were in somewhere else. Um, and, and I'm hearing you use like, you're, you're using words like taboo, stigma, you know, to like, to like, not like, I, I really want to call that into this space here. And, and mm -hmm. it's going to be, it's going to be, it's interesting here, uh, Alejandra, because you're, you're going to see the conversations I have have happened on kind of two different levels, right? So we'll talk about periods and we'll talk about like menstrual blood and we'll talk about the 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 taboo around it. But the fact that we're talking about it also is is its own thing, right? Uh, yeah. And and what's one of the things here, and I'll say this for uh, all the outliers that are listening to this now and in the future, right? Like for Alejandra, she found her thing and it was around like its own periods. And she's like, all right, I'm going to be a part of like the, the first, like the first chapter in, in, uh, in Central America uh, to, to be a part of this year. For you, it may be something different, but I'm going to ask you to, to pause for yourself. What's that area in your life that feels taboo? That feels like if you were having a conversation about it would bring out like, would feel like a stigma uh, to you that you feel like, like, you know, it doesn't really feel safe to, to be, to be able to express it. What is that for you? And what would it, what would life be like if you were able to create something for you, create something or join something to help make that more common and to just like allow it to just be what it is. Like it's out in the open and it's not, it ain't, it ain't a big deal, 
but you but we but you should know that it exists and know and know that it's happened. So I want to just kind of point us in that direction. That way, like regardless of where this conversation goes, we can all we can all make the connections from there. Yeah. Right. So this is it's interesting for me because like I like uh there's there's so many things that I want to bring into this space. Like I'm like, oh I want to like educate. I'm like, you know what? that's not necessarily what this platform does per se, although there will be a lot of education that comes in, right? Uh, yeah. Let me ask right now, if, some, if someone was interested in, I'll just put it in bring the space, if someone was interested in becoming more, like going further, like educating themselves, like how do they find out more about period movement and period uh, Guatemala? Like how would they move forward to find out more about it? Um, you say as if I was- like, Is there like a, like a website or something that someone can go to? Like, let's just like, let me, because I, I, yeah, I don't know where I'm going to take the conversation, but I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave us still being like, if someone wants more information or wants okay. to become informed, I want to make sure that they have the resources available to them, regardless of where this conversation goes. So how, how would someone be able to, to find out more? Okay, we usually, the social media that we use the most is Instagram. We are as period that Guatemala in there we usually upload activities that we are doing, workshops. Right now we are very excited because we have been working very close with the municipalities, with uh, government. So we are moving because that was one of the challenges last year that we have worked very good and we have done so many changes, but it was all in the urban area, like in the city. And we wanted to go even further to those communities that don't actually have internet access or don't have information access in their schools like those vulnerable um, groups that they need the most. So we are very excited that we have been moving on. So we usually upload those type of information to Instagram Light. Today we are in Putin. If you are a resident of Putin, we invite you to attend to our workshops. We also are planning right now our menstrual festival in which we have uh, academic areas. We have some cultural also um, spaces and the idea is to open this conversation and this uh, topic to be something to celebrate, something to enjoy, something to talk about it. Uh, but we use, we also are in Facebook as Period Guatemala. We are in Twitter also as Period Guatemala. So you can look as many information as you want. You can send us a private message, and yeah, we are open to to any proposal or to any collaboration also. Awesome. I, I, I just really wanted to make sure that we give a lot of space to it, right? Um, you talked earlier about like periods uh, being like an invisible problem. And you said something like, we believe that if like, well, like they figured it out, like they, they went to the class, they know what to do, right? Uh, and at the same time, if I was hearing you right, that like, well, there was actually two elements to it here that, 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 that got me curious uh, because it, I, I think it's something where it's like, the concept of having an invisible problem, I really get that. I really get like like most people may not even think it's an issue, but for those that that do, they know how how big of an issue it is. And so like yeah. th it's it's I'm really curious about like how you bring people into conversations uh, and how you create like experiences for for people when they when they may not even think it's a problem to even begin with or it, it feels taboo or uncomfortable or they're like I'm not going to mess with that here because that like that that shows up uh, I see that showing up for a lot of like my clients and myself included so can you can you speak a little bit about like the the not the challenges of the invisible problem I think we get that but can you talk about like some of the successes that you've had uh in in making these invisible problems more visible yeah they are very much close, you know, the challenges with the success because at first what we discovered is that we lack a lot of investigations, a lot of information, a lot of data that can support what we are talking about. Like for example, we do not know exactly how many people do not have the opportunity to access to a menstrual product. We do not have that exact information of how many people have access to um, toilet paper or to infrastructure as a bathroom or um, those kind of 
information we do not have it like exactly. So that was the first challenge. And one of our successes is that Bureau Movement has three, we can say three areas of work. We have um, service, we have education, and we have activists. In Guatemala, we add one more and it's investigation because we understood that we needed information to keep going and to prove people that what we are doing matters and matters to all. So we began like working with investigations. We have our investigator at Period Guatemala. And based on these also, these experiences of bringing education and bringing service and all of that, we have discovered many information that was very sharp for us. For example, we had the opportunity to go to different uh, prisons and we learned that in there, there are people that use it like the, um, the paper, not the toilet paper, but the one uh, that comes in the middle. Oh yeah, it's like the actual roll itself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There are people that use the newspaper there are people that use this bread and they put it inside as if it were a tampon. Um, so those kind of things got us thinking like that people is suffering a lot of infection, that people are suffering a lot of diseases, alteration because they are inserting things that are not thought to be in there. You know, they are very, they're damaging their body and um, all these behavior that the body receives, right? So based on these experiences, we began talking with people. For example, a few months ago, we had the chance to release a, a project, a law project in the Congress of Guatemala. And there was a lot of people saying like, why are you talking about period? That does not has to do anything with the government. Like that is a private matter. Don't talk to us about bringing up um, taxes, bringing up like, what has to do this with, with us, right? And there it goes, like the conversation of, have you thought about how many people has to think about even buying a, a bag of rice instead of buying um, some pets? Like, it's hilarious in a sarcastic way how uh, much a person will think if she goes and buys pets or she buys food for her family. It's the same as expensive, both things. So people do struggle with that, um, bringing up how people don't receive the education that they should have. So this taboo keeps repeating over generations and eventually people are going to be doing things even not because of the lack of opportunity, but because of the lack of correct information about um, their body, about their cycle, about their periods, okay? so. We try to kind of highlight those um, vulnerable situations that kind of opens you the eyes and keeps you understand, understand sorry, that you are living in a privileged position compared to a person that can go to a school because she doesn't have pets or because she doesn't have uh, clean water in the bathrooms of the school or because maybe that person is suffering an alteration that um, gives her a lot of pain so they cannot move like so easily and so free. So those conditions has helped us to prove that periods go even further from just using some topics for some Sabbath paths, but it goes even more complex than that. Thanks for that. Like there's a component here when you talk about like like in Guatemala we had to have like our own investigative like part of this here and to in like to actually go and see what people are doing to do the research to see to like see like hey this is what this is what is happening uh right now this is what people are actually doing um and you know I will say for me like as you were like describing like like what people were using they're like oh like bread even I was like oh like it 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 makes it it, it how do I say it? it just it makes it more real in one sense right um, and it also I think uh, it, it grounds I I I think it actually gets to the point where I was saying like how did you make the invisible visible 
right? That was that was the question I would ask, right? And and it's like, look here, like let's make it visible for you. Let's 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 do the research. What are people doing? Let's 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 find out what's happening, and then going out and and engaging in conversations around around that. So so this is so you're finding out you, you found out all, all these you're seeing like what's actually happening within the country. I'm imagining here. Uh, you talked earlier about people being saying like, "What's the connection with this with 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 government? Don't be trying to tie this to taxes here. Like, does it make any sense here?" Um, tell me about like your your uh, your journey to. It's not just like, I, I I guess it's like your journey in change around this, right? Because it's not just that you're saying let's talk about this all. Let's just let's be able to just talk about it. But but you're also connecting like, hey. There are implications to your society. There's implications to your, your community. Like, how can we support people so they don't have to be in that same kind of choice? Or like, like, what do we need to do for your or for your community? Where might you want to make an investment so that a young girl doesn't have to make a choice between is the water like safe or not? Right? I, I, am I getting am I getting the realm of of the the type of work? Okay, so like that that feels that feels really inspiring. And I'm also like at the same time I'm like. Um, I'm trying to find where, where my question is specifically with this, but it's, I want to just, I, maybe it's not a question, maybe it's not a question, maybe it's just being in conversation, like, like, what's it like being in, in, being in conversation with people or like, or like starting up conversations around like, hey, we're not just talking about this here, but we're actually looking for change, dollars, support, like, you know, maybe like laws being changed, like things like that. Tell me about like how this, when it moves into change for you. How does that uh how does that change things for you? At first it was it was overwhelming, but in a very good way because yeah, we we began doing this activism in social media, like um having posts with information about menstrual poverty, having posts about our workshops. Um, working with the schools, like that was kind of our activism, doing lives with um, maybe a doctor, maybe a psychologist, like, that was our activism. And eventually we get a lot of support in social media. We get a lot of support of people that began follow, but yeah, following our work. And people began to recognize us as an organization that works, period, right? So we began this conversation with congressmen and women, and we began uh, telling them more about our problem, about this problem framing, why this is so important. It begins this round of meetings, like, let's talk about it, why it matters. At first, it was very challenging because a lot of mostly men were like, mm, yeah, just talk whatever and it begins to they began to have this acceptance to the topic and just to maybe have this as a comment we are volunteers we do not actually work like 24 7 or something like that so it comes a moment in which we all are in our work of we can say a schedule and we have all these people uh, from government offices wanting to work with us and wanting to uh, talk more about this topic, to include this in their programs. And it's very satisfying to hear that, very challenging. But yeah, we actually began knocking doors, seeing who was able to hear us and to hear the problem and to sit down and have a conversation about periods, have a conversation about how in Guatemala these um, this is lived in different contexts, in the different spaces, how this needs to be addressed from the uh, public eye. And uh, yeah, that is, has been kind of our road, trying to see who's able and who's willing to, to hear us. And yeah. You know, I really, uh, as you're talking, it, it, I feel this, uh, this warmth inside of me. And I, and I uh, I'm very fortunate to be able to talk to people who come from a number of different backgrounds here with Outliers Edge. Uh, and one of the things that really captures me around like someone that's doing something that's related to activism is like, like 
it's like the cause had us knocking on people's doors. Like, like we, like we needed to make sure that like this, like we're, we're volunteers, like we're going to come out and make sure that this gets done here. Uh, and there's something in it that seems to transcend some of the other conversations that may happen uh, when someone's thinking about the impact for maybe themselves alone, you know, oh, how's this going to support my, my, my family? Like, should I, should I like, how am I going to look? So on and so forth. It feels like you're a really rooted in uh, clearly a, a mission that's much larger than yourself. Right. Uh, and B that the, the component of like, we'll do whatever it takes to make sure that this gets, that this gets heard, that this gets taken seriously. Uh, I want to call that out. I want to invite any outlier that's out there that's listening to this to like slow down for yourself, right? It, like, again, get, get them back into connection here. Like, and my, my, I think the opportunity here is a calibration opportunity. Like what, what component of what, what it is that you believe in your mission, the thing that you, that you feel is like, like outrageous in the world right now, like, to what extent are you willing to go to make sure that the people who need to hear this hear it? Like you're not just having this conversation in like the same corners, and it's not like a small small group of, of women coming together and saying this is not fair and things like that. Which like I'm sure that there are spaces around that, right? But you've elevated and continued the conversation, and you're saying we're bringing in more people. We're gonna like we're it's we're gonna keep going because this is this this needs to be this needs to be out in the world to be out in the world and so i want to just like bring anyone that's in here like to just calibrate for yourself check in with yourself what like what is it about what you're doing that like that needs that extra bit that needs that extra spark and if you haven't reached there i want to invite you to actually like filter to your filter and just take the time to get to what like what is at the core that just like that just can no longer continue to exist as it is whether or not you can take care of it in your lifetime or not. Uh, I, I, I'm enjoying talking to you, Alejandra, because you're like, we're the first in all Central America. Like, like, in, like in my mind, if you're the first in, in all Central America, then that means that like, in that like, you're the first in your country by like default, right? And that means that like, people aren't having these conversations. So now you're out here and you're, you're really, you're the first one of the only that's out there engaging in these kinds of conversations. And it's not a conversation that I think that, everyone is thinking about well let me let me make sure I'm, I'm thinking about this here for some people they're thinking about it all the time right um yeah. but they're not talking about they're not it doesn't feel like like it can be talked about so this one just kind of bring some attention to that bring this in here uh because it's really great hearing your story and, and the things that you're doing um and i think making that making that internal connection to like what are you gonna what are you gonna do about it are you like are you so into your cause that you'll knock on doors whether it's activism or not right whether it's leading powerfully in your organization or starting up a new business are you so into your cause that like no matter what you're like it's knocking on doors it's going into workshops it's doing it's doing the investigations whatever is necessary to like and being willing to be the only one in an entire region that says this is what we're doing you know so i just want to just like i want to give space to that here and i and and as i give space to that alejandra um i want to also just acknowledge you and the work that that uh everyone at period guatemala is doing right just like there are i like to think about as, as i'm talking to people what does it take for someone to be in front of me what does it take for someone to be out there creating the impact that they're creating and for many people I talk to, it's like, well, I, I just need to do this, you know? <laughs> but at the same time, I also acknowledge, I, I, I want to acknowledge you for actually doing it because because the, it is it is easier to see it, to feel that there's an injustice and to just keep moving on. But for you, something like, like that didn't happen. Can you tell us about um, the day that you decided like, hey, I want to like, I want to do something about this. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It counts very like way back. I think. Mm. Um, my first experience with maybe a different narrative from the one that I have lived in terms of period. It is when I had like eight, no, like eleven years old because I was already menstruating, 
And with my family, we go to a trip to, it's kind of a beach. It's here in Guatemala, but we were in an island. And once I get out of the, of the beach, I, I just saw that I was menstruating. Like I, I had in that in my mind that I was going to menstruate that day. And we were going to still have lunch there and have all day long there. And I didn't have any pads, any tampons, nothing. And I was like, what am I going to do? And luckily there was a restaurant and I go to the lady and I said like, well, I have my period. And I was wondering, you can't sell me some pads or some something to have my menstruation because I, I do not have anything, just my clothes. And she's like, oh no, we already, we just buy some, some materials like a couple of days ago, I can share with you some. And I was like, oh, thank you. And when she comes back, she was having some towels, like those towels that you use to clean up the tables. And there was a little girl and I was like, what am I going to do with this big towel? And she's like, yeah, you can take it. And there are different options. And she has, I have this very clear in my mind that the towel was from Mickey, Mickey Mouse. And I was like, okay. But for me, it was so impressive to think that that was the menstrual product that they, that they had. Not because they preferred that product, but because that was the only product that they knew and that they had so in hand, like they could get whenever they wanted to. So that is taking my mind even nowadays. Then I began um, studying medicine. I hated medicine, by the way, so I changed. And I began um, starting a social career. But when I get to have a boyfriend and we get to spend, you know, this uh, time alone and, well, um, I had this sexual experience and I understood how alone I was in terms of I didn't receive any education. I didn't know what to do, like what was happening in my body. And I began like researching what kind of organization gives this type of education because like I thought, okay, if I'm feeling like this, how many girls have felt like that and have just keep going without having any information or having any like support, you know, like just having somebody to talk very safe about the topic. Um, and that's when I found period. Period Guatemala was just starting like three months ago or something like that. They were very brand new. And uh, the founder, she has given me some classes at the university. So I talked to her and I told her like, I'm very interested. I don't know what are you doing, but just tell me in. I want to help. I want to. And we began working. Um, eventually, we only focus on menstruation and period, but like it was a whole new world for me. Like what I have lived many years ago was just this little climax of an iceberg that was huge by the inside and has so many uh, tales and so many different stories that it makes this um, very passionate topic because it has so much to talk about. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, one of the things I appreciate about you is that like, you're like, let's just make sure everything is like, like, like everything's on the table, right? And like, um, let's just have these experiences. Like I, I was, it's, it's interesting, but it's like, it's, it's visceral here. And like, and so I'm glad that like, there was something that was coming to my mind as you were saying this, and it was just a question that I think I want to ask. Like, as I hear you taking on this work, as I as I as I hear about the different experiences that you've had here, um, I wonder: have there been any times where you where that like it's felt since since it's considered taboo and and for many people it's felt dangerous, not just uncomfortable. But dangerous where you're like, I actually feel like it might be unsafe to have this conversation or unsafe to be in this space. I want to bring that in because I know that there's a number of people who they, they have something that's really important to them. And one of the things that's holding them back from playing at the level that they really want to be playing at is like, is a fear of safety in some way, shape or form. So I just want to just kind of check in. Have there, have there been times where you felt uh, where you've had to, to continue to move forward in the, in the face of, of feeling unsafe? 
know if it's at that level, but um, I just want to open up a little bit more. And I grew up in a very uh, traditional family. So even the work that I have tried to contribute in period has been very rejected at some point from my family because they believed that I was in this kind of a group that was promoting um, certain ideas that they were not okay with, with what they believed. And at a certain point, it was for me so unsafe to talk about it because it felt like instead of being supported, I was being very rejected, very uh, discriminated. I was being like, oh no, she's one of these. And you know, my family does not follow these feminism ideas and all of that. So they were like, oh, she's that crazy feminism that talk about, you know, um, uh, abortion, those kind of topics. And I was like, either way, I'm just talking about period. It's not like the end of the world, but it, for me, it was a process in which I needed to stand up and say like, hey, respect what I'm doing. And this is something that matters. But for me to have that courage was, was a process that it took me a long time to, to stand up and say, this is what I do. And this is why it matters so much to me. And please respect that. And if you're willing, support me in this process, you know. Um, can I, can I ask you, you can let me know if it's too personal, were they willing to support you? Like, 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 like basically did the, the world, like the world continue to exist after the conversation? Just let me just check in with you on that. And if it's too personal, you don't have to answer it. <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. Eventually, you know, at the end, family is family and they are going to support you and they are going to love you. But it took me a while to get into a conversation with them, to trying to explain them a little bit more what I'm, what I was doing, and why it mattered so much. There are still some occasions in which they say like they don't completely understand what I do, but I also understood that I do not have to like keep, uh, we say, convincing them from what I'm doing. Like eventually if they are willing to accept it and to hear me out, then they are going to do it. And if not, well, I yeah. have <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm glad that you opened up the conversation in this way because like, uh, I don't, I'm recognizing that like the way I tend to have conversations seems to be like in the, like a positive element. I'm like, oh, let's go out there and create the new future, right? But it also comes at a cost. I like to think of it as an investment because we're like, but like there's there's this feeling oftentimes of like a life or death element to it, right? Um, and I like that you did open the space and you brought it into the family. Sometimes I'll talk to people and they'll, they'll be like, yeah, if I was if I was bringing out what I really like, whether it's activism or something else that they're really passionate about or, or like who they feel that they are and trying to bring that to inside of their workplace or or. I'll say it in like workplace space. Like, what if I get fired or I don't get that promotion? Right. That's what feels un unsafe. You know, like in, in, in a, in a, if you're as entrepreneurs are like, well, what if, what if I bring this up and I lose my client? So I don't get like, I don't get the sponsorships or whatever it is. Right. So like, and then we all have that the space of our families, you know? So it's like, what if, and the idea of being rejected, like whether it's family or like our loved ones or the people like in our relationship, what if I, what if I am, out in the world and I lose the relationships that I have right now. Families, I always say it's like the, the quantum world. It's like everything makes sense at, at one level where you get down to family and up is down and maybe it's alive, like maybe something's happening or maybe it's not. It's you know, it's all like it's families, family's its own game, right? And you can be really powerful out in the world helping people uh, like you know that your work is, is impacting people and then you walk into your home or you walk into your parents' house and like, and that feeling can completely just go away, right? Or just, or, or it almost doesn't matter. So I like, I, I do like that you, thank you for taking, I left it open-ended for a reason. Thank you for taking it to the place that it needed to get taken to. Because I, I do believe that like, as we, one of the things that's specific to us choosing to be one of the only in the work that we're doing, one of the first in the one, work that we're doing, or one of a kind in the work, the work that we're doing. So we don't necessarily mean that you're going to get tons of support from every single place that you want. Um, and so just, so just like here, 
a part of me wanted to ask like, oh, what was your process to get there? And how did you build the courage? But I don't know if that's going to be as meaningful as just knowing that like, what, however difficult it was, however uncomfortable it was, like you, you chose to walk the courageous path to be in conversation. And it wasn't that, and the outcome was not necessarily, come on in, I did like, you didn't have anything to worry about. Like, like it's not necessarily that rosy of a picture, right? It's like, all right, I have to, we're still working on things. We're still like trying to get to this place here. I like to call that out. And I'm really grateful that, that you brought this in, uh, into our space because it is a part of, it is a part of like what comes with being the first. If you don't have to deal with it and it's, and it, everything is, it's all green lights, awesome. That, 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 that's that much faster that we all get a chance to experience it change. Uh, and if you do, awesome. It means that you're out there taking care of something and, and showing up in more ways that in, in alignment with, with what's real for you. So Alejandra, I'm, I'm really grateful to hear this here. Why don't we do this? We'll, we'll start wrapping up this conversation. Um, I get, I, I'm curious, I'm hearing about some of the things that you've done. I'm hearing about some of the things that are happening right now. Like, like what's up next? Like what, what's one project? What's one thing that you're so excited about related to this? Well, I don't know if, if it counts as it, but a couple of weeks we had the chance to uh, organize a hack with Unleash. Unleash is an international organization that basically they promote these you know, um, digital innovation projects. And we made this collaboration, which a group of people were participating and the idea is that along the hack, they were going to uh, design different digital innovative projects that were related to period. And why am I talking this as in future? Because one of the groups that was able to create their project was uh, focusing in the LGTB Q a plus um, community in which it was an app that was going to give like safe information to them and safe information also about certain contact and all this. And I'm, I'm very excited because the next step for this group is that they are competing um, worldwide in India on December and the idea is that it's kind of this uh, shared tank in which they are going to be presenting their project and the people that are interested in uh, investing, they are going to give money and they are going to invest on the product. So it excites me a lot because it's going to be one of the first times that menstruation is part of these um, projects, you know, the first time that we propose this to the, to the organizer um, at Unleash. He said like, oh, but this is a very difficult topic. I don't know if you're going to be having um, people want to participate. I don't know if you're going to be having the exact expectation that you are uh, wanting for. And we were like, yeah, we could do that. And right now we have an amazing product that it's competing internationally and hopefully they are going to be having, well, financial support to make it real. Oh, that really is exciting. I, like, thanks for bringing that in here. Uh, I there's many, many different parts of it that that just really uh, light up for me. Um, one of the things that I'm pulling out of this is like, uh, one, just like I'm, I'm like I'm glad to hear that like the the product and like has a chance to come to life and they're continue to compete and moving that forward. All right. Uh, the second thing I'm hearing is like is partnerships. Right. That like like you like you didn't go and say we need to go and create a new app. You're like, no, let's go partner with with people. And that organization doesn't have to go create a new app. Let's go partner with someone and find a, find a person that wants to go or the people that want to build this app. And let's go like enable, empower, platform, make it easy for them to go and do it, you know? Because it could have been another hackathon where like, they're like, oh, we came up with this product. And it's like, well, or, or I can imagine, I've been a part of hackathons in the past where you're like trying to talk and get people to say, to like agree to the, your idea, get like the whole team on board. Um, and, I, and it's really cool to just think about like how you created a pathway for this idea, which might've been on someone's mind for a very long time, you know, mm -hmm. to actually have a, a space to, to flourish, to win and to continue on their journey uh, at the next stage of the, of the competition. Yeah. Well, that's really exciting. 
Uh, I, I'm uh, hungry. I'm, I'm grateful that we get to be in conversation here. Uh, thank you. Thank you for modeling and being in the in modeling, uh, modeling what it's, what it's like to like be in a, a future where at least from a conversational standpoint, at least from a, like, we're able to be in a place where like the taboos that have held us in the past don't have to grip us right now. And I really, really, I say that really intentionally because there's a lot, a lot of us are working on things that we may not be able to see come to fruition at the level that we want to see. But if we're able to create an example of it in any given experience, any given room, any given workshop, I'm sure you're seeing this year, it helps to like plant that seed that it that it can be possible if we just put in more resources and sustain it going forward. So thanks for thanks for being a model of that uh, in in this space. Can you tell us one last time here uh, if anyone wants to uh, follow you on Instagram? I think that's where you said like this is the best place to go. Uh, what do they have to look up to be able to find you or, or any of the social medias? You're, you're you're the same thing on every social media. What what is it again? Pure Guatemala. Okay. Right. You Find us in, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and you can send us a direct message and we can talk about the topic and see opportunities of collaborating. Awesome. Awesome. If there's one last thing that you would like for anyone listening, whether they're an outlier, whether they're like, it doesn't matter, you know, mm -hmm. like if there's this one message that you have to like put out into the world, what would that message be? Find something that it bothers you, something that um, keeps you awake at night, find that issue that you cannot just keep going and ignore that and make it your passion and try to do something about it. As little as it is, you can make a footprint in the world and you can help somebody out there that is crying for, for a hand. Thank you, Alejandra. We're just getting started. Take 10 seconds to think about your greatest insight from today's conversation. And if you're ready to go and bring this to a deeper, more applicable level for you, come and join us in an upcoming masterclass. Go to outliersedge.com slash masterclass to be coached live and to bring your aspirations, your goals, and your challenges and have them handled in real time. This is high flame, high impact, high transformation. Go to outliersedge.com slash masterclass and come experience your next level of leadership.